What's up everybody, welcome to a new video. Tonight I'm going to capture Mars. I will be using my Skywatcher 150 PDS telescope. This is a reflector telescope with an aperture of 150mm and a focal length of 750mm, resulting in a focal ratio of f5. I recently purchased a Teleview PowerMate Barlow with a 5x magnification. Adding this to my setup will give me a total focal length of 3750mm, which results in a focal ratio of f25. This whole setup will be mounted on my Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro. The camera I will be using is the ZWO ASI 120MCS. I usually use this camera as my guider camera, but it's perfectly suitable for planetary imaging as well. And finally I will be using my ZWO electronic focuser to fine tune my focus. Because I never image with a laptop, I will be using my ASI Air for the polar alignment, simply because I'm used to doing it this way. Once I'm finished with my polar alignment, the ASI Air will not be used any further and it will fully switch over to my laptop. And the software I will be using to capture my images is called SharpCap, which is a free piece of software. I will quickly go over the steps I take to get to my final results. This is not really a tutorial, but I will be uploading a tutorial about this soon. As you can see, the footage is barely usable straight from the camera, so I will have to do some processing on it. The footage is black and white because the video still needs debayering, and the footage is also very jittery, so you see Mars jumping around a lot. To fix this, I start off by loading the footage in a free piece of software called Planetary Imaging Preprocessor which debayers the video and crops and stabilizes the footage. It will only help with stabilizing the footage and not really get rid of the jittery stuff in the footage, which is mostly caused by disturbances in the atmosphere. This jitter can't really be removed as far as I know and it will impact how many frames you can stack from the footage you are using. To stack the footage I'm using another piece of software which is also free called AutoStackerd. This software will stack the entire video clip into a single image and the stacked image is still very fuzzy and honestly not really that impressive. I repeat the stacking process for each video clip I have, resulting in a whole sequence of images. Each stacked image will be used as one video frame in my final result. This way I end up with a time lapse where each second represents about 12 and a half minutes in real time. This is fast enough to actually be able to see the rotation of Mars. This result, however, is still very fuzzy and a lot of details are still hidden. To pull out these details I will sharpen the image in Registax, which is another free piece of software. Registax has a powerful wavelets tool, which can help me bring out the details of the planet's surface. A lot of the details are starting to be visible, but I'm not really fully satisfied yet. As a final step I will take the footage into Photoshop, which is certainly not free. In Photoshop I will stretch the histogram a little further until I'm satisfied with my image. This can also be done in Registax, but this was my first time doing planetary imaging. So I haven't really been able to dive deeper into Registax myself. The final result is really satisfying to me. I'm quite surprised I was able to get this many details considering the quality of the raw footage. After this I repeated the whole process, but instead of using 30 second clips per final frame, I was using 1 minute, 2 minutes and 4 minute clips. Longer clips means each frame is stacked for more data, which should reduce the noise in my final result. The downside, however, is that the rotation also plays back faster and the final time lapse is shorter. The final thing I tried out is a process called drizzling, which uses the data to interpolate pixel values and upscale your output image. So this is not simply a larger version of my initial result, but the upscaling is actually calculated based on the data from my input video. Drizzling can be done in either 1.5 or 3 times, but drastically increases your stacking time. 
It really depends on the data if drizzling is worth trying and honestly I lack the personal experience to determine if it was worth trying in my own case. So which result is my personal favorite? To be fair I will scrap all the results which are drizzled three times simply because they are too noisy and I don't really like the way they ended up. Only the one with 4 minutes per frame is decent but the rotation speed is too fast to be impressive to look at. I could bounce it back and forth which is something people often do with images like these but I personally don't like this. Because of this I will also scrap all my results based on 4 minutes per frame. In my opinion the rotation speed of the time lapses with 1 minute or 2 minutes per frame is the most pleasant to look at. 30 seconds is just a little too slow and it takes a moment before you realize it is actually rotating so I'm scrapping these two. A bigger size is always nice but the drizzling does make the noise more visible. Therefore I'm crossing out the 1 minute drizzled results. I think I messed up a little during processing for the drizzled results with the 2 minutes per frame because it still looks a bit fuzzy to me so that one is gone as well. So these are the final two, it's hard to pick one of them. The results with 2 minutes per frame has a little more detail but the entire clip only lasts 4 seconds. While the result for the 1 minute per frame has a slower rotation speed but a little less detail. I think I prefer detail over rotational speed and therefore I will choose the one with 2 minutes per frame as my favorite from the whole set. I'm pretty sure some of you think another one of my results is better than this one. If you do just let me know in the comments. Mars is currently moving away again and it won't be as close as it was for many years to come. But this is not a reason to give up hope. Every two years we pass each other and although the next few passes will not be as close as this one, we will still get close enough to get some good images. I'm already looking forward to the next opposition. And because I've gotten my deep sky camera back I will not be imaging Mars again this season. I might try some more planetary imaging for the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. Just keeping my fingers crossed for clear skies. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'm really excited that I've been able to capture something like this. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you want to see more in the future, you can also subscribe. And this way you can join me next time when I am capturing the cosmos.